Hello everyone, welcome to GGN. Today is Wednesday, October 31st, 2012. I'm Darko. My website is ggnonline.com and on YouTube my channels are ddarko2012 and my backup channel is ddarko2013. I recommend uh, subscribing to the 2013 account um, because just in case my first account goes down for some reason for copyright infringements and stuff like that, you have it. Alright, um, I'm going to cover the Middle East and I'm going to cover Asia including uh, China and Russia. So, a lot of interesting articles. After botching Libya, war on terror spreads to Mali. So, the U.S. is pushing for military intervention in Mali to hose out a new al-Qaeda enclave, which is the result of the intervention in Libya. So, again, that's the question that should be asked. Why did we go in there to begin with? Or why was that supported by the West, the U.S., and the U.K.? They have blood on their hands. They should have never went in there and ousted Muammar Gaddafi and their uh, government, uh, but they did. And so it has nothing to do with botched security. In fact, um, the CIA and generals warned um, all the way up to the president and stuff like that about what was going on. They ignored it. In other words, they wanted this to happen. They wanted a little smuggling state to smuggle arms into other states such as Syria for the regime change. So it's a nice haven. And what's going on in Mali is a result of uh, hiring terrorists and stuff like that uh, with Libya. So, undoubtedly, it needs to be done, but so much for the White House uh, claim to have terrorists on the run. So, Secretary of State Clinton was in Algeria on Monday. Remember, I just covered this yesterday. They said uh, that there's two different articles that said that it kept using the term green light. So, in other words, everything was, o it was almost a green light for Mali, except they needed... Uh, Algeria's permission. So this is why Hillary Clinton's going to Algeria to get the green light. Pleading with government to support the U.S. France-led military invasion to destroy Al-Qaeda, al qaeda the same thing that they support and arm uh, around the world, their latest conquest in northern Mali, an impoverished African state along the Sahara. So in other words, they want to go and rape the resources of gold and um, I think even there's some oil around there too. Sudan, the new battlefield in Iran and Israel's covert conflict. So, you know, it's just like everything else. It has to do with business and resources, but they'll uh, they'll play this game of bad guy and good guy and whatnot. Warships from Tehran dock in Port Sudan as tensions between the two Middle East powers escalate. So, um, yeah, it said here that um, the Iranian warships have arrived in the Port uh, Sudan in the apparent show of support for the government... Uh, one week after it accused Israel of bombing an arms factory in the Sudanese capital. Just yesterday, it was actually um, on fire again. So, Iran state news agency confirmed yesterday that two vessels, a destroyer and helicopter carrier, have docked in the Sudan's main port on the Red Sea, and their commanders will be meeting the Sudanese officials. Then we have this. Uh, it's kind of backing it up. Different source from UPI. But it's the same type uh, article as this. The battlefield between Iran and Israel is now the Sudan. So two events illustrate how East Africa and Red Sea that runs between two strategic waterways, the Suez and uh, in the north, and Bab al Mambet oh, Dad, whatever, straight in the south, sorry, butchering that, have become an occasional battleground for Israel and Iran. So a bunch of um, accusations and stuff like that by the West, especially Israel saying that the uh, Iran's Revolutionary Guard Corps uh, covert operations arm Al Quds Force uses the Red Sea to smuggle weapons to Palestinian Palestinian militants in Hamas ruled Gaza Strip, as well as Iranian-backed Hezbollah in Lebanon via Sudan and Egypt. Then next stop, U.S.-backed African troops could invade Mali within weeks. The EU may send 200 trainers for war. So, with Mali's military-dominated interim government hoping for international help in the reconquest of northern two-thirds of their nation. Western diplomats say that the deal to finalize an African Union-led invasion could have troops on the ground within a matter of weeks. The Obama regime and the French government have both been keen to start such a war and have been plotting a petition um, or petitioning the United Nations Security Council to quickly endorse any plan that would lead to an invasion, which they seem uh, certain to do. This brief history, the Mali government lost its northern region to Tureg secessionists earlier this year when fighters obtained large amounts of advanced weapons from Libya in the wake of the NATO-backed war there. The Turegs have since lost control of the th uh, region to a third faction, Ansar Dine, which is calling for a Salafist theocracy in the state. The Malian military held a coup in the south after their defeat in the north and has since installed an interim government. 
Tregs have long complained of persecution by the Malian government, which was the basis for their uh, secession efforts. And today the Mali government, or military, sorry, launched an attack on the frontier, killing eight Tregs who they suspected of being armed gunmen, but who later turned out to be innocent civilians. So another source from Reuters, um, talking about what we were just talking about, except it's the EU, considering sending 200 troops to train the Mali uh, army. So... So what they're going to do is they're going to track the Islamists there and they're going to turn it into a Libya and a Syria game. So, and it'll, it'll probably spill over to somewhere else. So that's the thing. It's like, where's their next target? It's not the Sudan. It's somewhere around the Sudan so that they can have a reason to go in there because of the instability that they created. And when they're killing innocent civilians, these same a-holes can go in there and say, oh, it's a humanitarian crisis as they wipe the fake tears from their eyes like Clinton. And we have resource rapture, China's play for African gold at what cost? So they, remember, China's in there as well. China's emergence as a major player in Africa is fueling an intense debate over the nature and mode of its involvement. Well, I'm sure it's the same as the West, to rape the resources. China's national gold's bid for Tan, uh, yeah, Tanzania's largest gold mine adds kindling to the fire. The ugly side of mining in Africa made global headlines with the strikes that killed 44 miners. I think they were just uh, going off again. The African mining ha that has received comparatively little coverage, although the implications are just as significant. That's right. Remember I was saying about how the gold supply or gold mining and stuff like that had uh, went down almost. It was like the third largest production or producer in the world. Finishing up, though, last year, Chinese interests invested nearly $16 billion in African mining projects, a tenfold increase from 2010, according to the China Mining Association. Moving on, we have Russia may deploy reconnaissance aircraft to French base in Djibouti. That's what I was covering, remember? This is, the, of course, the base, uh, uh, X whatever French base, and it has U.S. Marines there. It has um, drones there, and they're carrying out strikes in Yemen, um, in Somalia, basically in the Gulf of Aden, that area. So Russia may deploy two reconnaissance aircraft to a French base in the Horn of Africa, state of Djibouti, where the U.S. is reportedly leading its secret drone war in the region. Why is this big news? Well, because remember I just covered how the U.S. was going to start beefing up this base. I mean. They were getting to the nitty-gritty details about how many men they were going to have there and fixing light fixtures and stuff like that and upgrading barracks and stuff, you know. So they're, you know, they're starting to build that up, that area in the Gulf of Aden. It's kind of interesting, though. They said aimed at conducting anti-piracy. So, you know, that's just a nice little cover there. Yeah, this Camp Lemonier is the busiest Predator drone brace outside of the Afghan war zone. And some other big news, Syrian Air Force General assassinated in the capital. Members of the terrorist Free Syrian Army um, have assassinated the Syrian Air Force General in Damascus. This is a big deal because, you know, I remember uh, a cover about how Turkish, Turkey generals are, uh, general has basically taken over these Free Syrian terrorists. We already know they're arming them at the border and sending them back to wreak havoc on the Syrian government. But uh, they're taking leadership of this. And then we also know what? that it was a good possibility that the assassination of the last higher-ups for uh, the Syrian government um, that are well-trusted uh, Assad um, partners or whatever, basically generals and that, they were what? They were assassinated and that they were possibly intelligence, i.e. CIA, um, private contractors, SAS, something like that, or Mossad. So there's a good chance that this that's what this was as well. They're trying to scare Assad. That's what it is. It's part of the Brookings Institute for Regime Change document policy. So, uh, Qatar accuses Syrian government of genocide after failed truce. So remember, Qatar was at the center of the uh, Gulf Cooperation uh, Council that was stacking up uh, cash and weapons and sending them directly to the terrorists. They were the ones that were heading this up. And uh, so now they've they've uh, they've escalated the violence, and now they're going to blame it on the Syrian government. Well, no, actually. Um, it wasn't the Syrian government, as I've I've covered before. Um, we, you know, you had jihadi rebel group preemptively rejects proposed Syrian ceasefire for Muslim holiday. This is what uh, October, like 24th or something like that. Basically, yeah, 24th. So they never intended to keep it anyways. Just one of those factions. It says, however, Syrian insurgents set off the bomb in Damascus on the very first day of the holidays. So. He's going to go ahead and uh, blame them when it was really the people that he's supporting. So, but that makes sense. So, and he goes on and accuses the Syrian government of a war of extermination against its own people. Well, really, it's a bunch of outsiders, mostly Sunni, uh, Sunnis and Zionists, uh, 
that are basically trying to get the Shiite dominated government out of there. So interesting, he says, what is happening in Syria is not a civil war. Well, right, I remember I mentioned that it's not a civil war. It is a, it is a, uh, how could you put it, an incursion or an invasion um, of foreign mercenaries and terrorists, including Al Qaeda, that are being armed by the West, being armed by the um, Gulf Arab states and the Zionists to get uh, to bring on a sectarian war and get a regime change. Next up, Jordan's jihadists drawn to the Syrian conflict. So remember, I talked about this all about how all these terrorists are coming from all over, especially Libya and Iraq. Same ones that were killing American soldiers. The West is now arming and funding and backing with intelligence. So now more Jordan's jihadists drawn to Syrian conflict. And a lot of these refugees are going over the border into Jordan. And they're wreaking havoc with the government forces or protesting and causing all kinds of instability in those refugee camps. And then uh, they go back, what, over the border into Syria and they start killing people, especially civilians. But it's crazy because Jordan was what? They were hosting the big exercise of all those troops, 20,000 troops in that. Jordan is a key component for um, military boots on the ground as far as a, a physical invasion by Western forces with their flags flying high of each country that's already been participating in this. But, uh, but at the same time, they're harboring terrorists. So remember this, NATO using Al-Qaeda rat lines to flood Syria with foreign terrorists. 2007-2008 uh, U.S. West Point report reveals Al-Qaeda network behind NATO's so-called freedom fighters. Extremists in Syria were behind Iraq war, foreign terrorist influx, and not Syrian government. So there you go. The Obama regime is working up to set up Syrian opposition council. Remember France telling the, the terrorists to go ahead and set up your own government. Uh, later, they moved their... Uh, their little council from Turkey into Syria. The U.S. has been putting together a body of opposition puppets to serve as the potential interim government post-regime change. So isn't that nice? Oh, they're going to meet in Qatar or Qatar. Yeah, see, this is what they did with Gaddafi. Um, you know, right away, they just set up a government and uh, they just put it in there. They enforced it, right? And now look at what they have. They have pure chaos. West calls for Assad departure daydreaming says russia russia says if our position if the position of our partners remains the departure of this leader assad who they do not like the bloodbath will continue said russia's foreign minister lavrov lavrov went on to say that assad's fate should be decided by the syrian people so kind of coming out russia is with that base in djibouti now or uh, sending planes there and now that okay so the western powers own boogeyman terrorist organization Al-Qaeda in Iraq claims responsibility for the deadly attacks during the Muslim holiday. So the wave of attacks that killed dozens of people in the past two days during a major Muslim holiday, they took credit for. So Iraqi MP accuses Saudi Arabia of supporting terrorism, saying they're supporting terrorism by giving a warm welcome to fugitive Iraqi vice president. He also said that Riyadh's move shows the kingdom's disrespect for international law and the principles of sovereignty of a neighboring country. And then we have this one, this article from National Iraqi News Agency. MP demands U.S. to deal with Iraq as a sovereign nation. So the MP for the Iraqi Free Coalition demanded the U.S. regime to deal with Iraq as a sovereign and independent government, not as a rival political force, or i.e. puppet regime. Then Turkey's southern buildup, remember this article, may aim at Kurds and not the Syrian government. Forces may target PKK fighters across the border. So, they, remember, the Turks are arming them. They're going across the border. So, and uh, we have Erdogan criticized for banning opposition rally on Republic Day. Leader of Turkey's main opposition party has criticized Prime Minister Erdogan for banning an opposition rally to mark the Republic. He goes on, he says, look at that mentality. An eight-year-old woman, kids at the age of eight or nine, young people, women, disabled people that had nothing but flags in their hands were celebrating the most joyous national holiday, and Erdogan calls them illegal organizations. Big deal. So he's losing, he's losing power over there, support, if he even had it to begin with. Turkey under pressure over Kurdish hunger strikes. So around, around 700 detainees at more than 50 prisons are surviving on salted or sweetened water and vitamins alone in a strike that has gained momentum since it began with several dozen detainees last month. So the Turkish government's under increasing pressure on how to tackle the hunger strike by the Kurdish prisoners as protests near its eighth week and their health deteriorates. And finishing up for this first video, firebombs and water cannons, Kurdish protesters clash with police in Turkey. 
And this is over the hunger strike. This is GGN. Thank you.